Hey, what's up, y'all? <clears throat> I got a totally different type of unboxing from what y'all normally see on my channel. Hang on. <clears throat> uh, for for many, 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 many years, <clears throat> I have uh, played a game called Magic the Gathering. And for quite a long, long time now, uh, I kind of quit playing. Uh, I always considered myself still a Magic player. I just didn't have anyone to play any games with or anything. So I, I was just kind of stagnant there for a while. But I've been wanting to get back into it. And while I'm working on a green control deck, and for it, if you're watching this video and you don't know anything about Magic, you don't understand what I'm saying. But if you do know about Magic, uh, you at least when I was playing, a green control deck was <clears throat> uh, literally almost, damn nearly unheard of. That, the idea was out there, but I came up with my own version of one, and I tell you, it, it was a beautiful thing. It, it was it was far from unbeatable, but at, when it worked right, it, it was something to be seen. It was it was pretty funny. <clears throat> so while I'm trying to rebuild that deck. I watched a couple of videos here on YouTube and I saw that the new uh, core edition, I guess it's the 2013 core edition, was out. They got a fat pack, which is unlike what I'm used to when I think of a fat pack. When I was playing, a fat pack was a novel and either six booster packs or three booster packs and a starter deck. So. They're a lot different now, but they got this new thing, which is called a toolkit, and that's what this is, obviously, Deck Builder's Toolkit. And that's what we're going to unbox now. We're going to go through the uncommons and the rares, because really, that, that's all I'm ever interested in. I'm uh, going to use a knife I haven't used or carried in a while. This is the Zero Tolerance 350, customized, pimped out with uh, carbon fiber and G10. So, let's do it. <clears throat> I'm not a hundred percent as to what comes in this thing, so this is kind of be this is gonna kind of be new for all of us here. All right, I hope this is in frame, guys. I'm I'm working with a different uh, camera angle to hopefully maximize this type of video. So you got some booster packs here. Uh. Innistrad, I guess is how you would say that. I don't know, they got some they got some weird names from what I'm used to seeing. But anyway, you got four four booster packs there. Um most you know big sets like this come with some literature. Uh one of these things is supposed to, you know, quote unquote show you how to play. Don't don't go by by these pieces of paper because they, they they're not gonna show you what you need to know. Best way to learn is to do it. All right, so what we've got here is okay. You got a pack of land. I don't know how many cards that is, uh, but let's see hang on guys all right guys I'm, I'm sorry I'm trying you're gonna have all the lands in here all five plains swamps islands forest mountains uh, let's see I don't know, you may have about a hundred land here, or, or so. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's all of them. This basically is uh, set up so that you can make your deck and get the plan. So, if you've never played before, this little toolkit seems to be a pretty good way to start out with. Uh, let's see.
So those were the basic lands. All right, let's see here. We're kind of going through here. We're just pulling out the uncommons and the any rares that may be in here. All right, so there was just commons and uncommons in that pack there. You got the Seraph of Dawn, which is a white card, a creature card. It flies, it's 2-4. Uh, be a nice little blocker really but uh, I don't really play a lot of white when I do play I like green black or black with a combination of either uh, black blue black red something like that uh, here you got an artifact which I really like playing artifacts I play a lot of those in different decks uh, but that one is a common I got those out by mistake uh, you got another angel there Angel, angel, okay, a sorcery. Return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. If it's an angel, put a 1-1 counter on it. Okay, I can see how that's handy. Uh, black, they got zombies out now, which is pretty cool. Mm. So whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, you may return this guy from your graveyard to your hand. Not, not bad. Uh, five casting costs for a 4-1. Uh, personally, I probably wouldn't play it. Uh, whatever. I don't know. What is that guy? The Relentless Scabs. Uh, Scab Goliath. Uh, Diagraph Captain. I guess that's how you say that. Other zombies you control get a 1 1. Whenever a zombie you control dies, target opponent loses a life. Not bad. I would definitely play that. Uh, let's see. Scar's Day, Cultist. Uh, Thunderous Wrath. Flames of Firebrand. This card I actually like. I, I've seen this card. I've played it before. Uh, deals 3 damage. Divide any way you choose among any number of target creatures or players. So you can do one to a creature, two to a player, three to a creature, three to a player, whatever you want. Not bad. Definitely something I would use. Mm, whatever. Invisible Stalker and Harbor Bandit. Gets plus one, plus one as long as you can uh, control an island. Tap one and a blue. Uh, it becomes unblockable this turn. Not bad. Uh, I'd probably play that. Alright. And I guess it's the same deal, just different colors. That was a lot of black and blue and, uh, and red. This one's got a lot of green in it. Uh, there's some white. You got a human soldier here, a Crusader of Ordic. Has power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. Not bad. That's pretty good for a white one. Uh, Talrand's Invocation. Put a 2-2 two, two blue drake creature token uh, with flying onto the battlefield. Uh, I don't know. Forecasting cost. I don't know. I probably wouldn't play that. Now this one I like. Nebulous of the Breath. It's a spirit creature. Flying to one, three casting cause. Tap a island, tap the creature. You can tap or untap target creature. I can uh, I can see a lot of combos going on with this card. So that that would definitely be good to have. Be good to have four of those. Uh, that's a vampire nighthawk. It's a vampire uh, shaman creature. Doesn't seem to be too bad. It's a two three flying three casting cost. I gotta refresh myself on some of these new abilities that are out here. Like this one says uh, 
This Vampire Nighthawk, it says Death Touch and Life Link. I gotta familiarize myself with those. This ain't bad. Okay. Uh, a zombie creature, whenever a creature dealt damage by this guy, uh, this turn dies. So if, if you attack and this creature kills a creature that blocked it, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So that ain't bad. Uh, let's see. Gang of Devils. Let's see, so okay, if this thing dies, it deals 3 damage divided any way you choose among any number of target creatures or players. So you can deal 1 damage to one thing, 2 to another if you want, whatever whatever you want to do. Th see, this is one, I wouldn't play this personally. It's, it's a forecasting cost, 4-4 four, four creature with no special abilities. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. It's it's fine if you if you took control of one of your opponent's creatures, but really if you took control of one of your opponent's creatures, I would think you'd want to keep control of it and not give it back to them. It's an uncommon. I don't know. I wouldn't play it. Now this ain't bad. Uh, five casting costs four or five, so it's a big creature. Uh, when this guy enters the battlefield, if a creature died this turn, you gain five life, so that ain't bad. Let you know. Uh, you do your attack. If one of your creatures dies off, then you want to play this guy. Gain five life. Ain't a bad deal. And then you got more land there. Alright, so this one's going to have artifacts in it. It looks like a lot more white cards. It seemed like these bigger packs are just the commons and the uncommons, really. Uh, I remember this card, Pacifism. I played that back in the day. Oh, this, this is a pretty good card for a blue one. Four casting costs, 2-2 two, two flyer. When Miss Raven enters the battlefield, return target creature to its owner's hand. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, that I would play. Yeah, I kind of like this one. They they didn't mess around with the name at all. They just call it Murder. Three casting costs to destroy a target creature. That's really good. I would put four of those in a deck. No problem. Duress. Love that card. Pretty cool new artwork on it. Uh, your opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. They discard that card for a one casting cost. Uh, that could really and truly be a game winner right there. That's a good way to kill a creature off. Enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. You put that on one of your opponent's creatures, kill the creature off. This I like. This one here, Rummaging Goblin. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one with a three casting cost, which is kind of high, but it's got a neat ability. You tap it, draw a card, or discard a card, and then you get to draw a card. Anyone who plays Magic, you know, you've had that time happen where you just keep drawing land after land after land and you don't need any more land. That's when this comes in good hand right here. Uh, tap it, discard that land that you no longer need, draw a new card. So yeah, I mean, it's... A lot of commons and uncommons is uh, really what those big packs were. We'll just go straight to the rares and these boosters to try to speed this up a bit. Only reason I'm kind of going through these uh, cards like I am is like I said, I haven't played in forever. Alright, so the rare and this one's an artifact, which I already like. 
uh, Witch Bane Orb. When Witch Bane Orm enters the battlefield, destroy all curses attached to you. And you have Hexproof. Again, Hexproof. Hex, that's an uh, ability i got to familiarize myself with, but it seems like it would be pretty handy. Alright, let's check it out. Alright, so... The rare in this one, green card, Revenge of the Hunted, Sorcery. Until end of turn, uh, target creature gets plus six, plus six, gains trample, and all creatures able to block it this turn do so. So that is definitely something, uh, it, it can definitely be handy. Uh, I would put this on, like right here you see a, you got a 5-5 five, five creature. I would put this 6-6 six, six onto that, because you don't want to put it on a 1-1, one, one, because chances are your creature could die at that point, but... Uh, if you put this on a big creature, it's a good way to kind of empty out the your opponent's creature. So, uh, not bad. I mean, it's a six casting cost, which is kind of high. But if you throw some Land of War Elves and stuff in your deck, you know, you should be pretty well straight. You can get a lot of mana real fast with a green. So. Okay, got a foil, but the foil is a common. It's a bone throne vampire, sacrifice creature. This guy gets plus two, plus two, turn to turn. Which is real good, because with all the token creatures that you can create in these new sets, uh, it's a good way to pump this guy up uh, real hard and fast. So, not, not bad. Two casting costs, it's a one, one to start. Not bad. Okay, the rare in this one is a land, so that's usually pretty good. Cathedral of War, when it enters the battlefield, it enters the battlefield tapped. Add, uh, tap it, add one mana to your mana pool, and it's got the ability called Exalted. Whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. That's okay, it ain't bad, uh, especially if you get out a creature that's like a one casting cost for a one one or something, and you want to start attacking quick in, in the early going. If you got this land out, that's pretty good because you'll get that extra point of damage early on. Alright, last booster pack. <clears throat> and when I get that green control deck finished, guys, I'll do a video and I'll show y'all uh, what it all contains. Uh, uh, Jamaday Tomb. I remember this card. I played this a lot. Okay, another artifact rare. Three casting cost. It's Sands of Delirium. Tap X and tap this. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. That I love. I will definitely be putting that in the deck. Actually, that will go in the uh, green control deck, no doubt. Uh, when it says tap X, as many lands as you have, as you know, if you have six land but you want to tap three and tap this, and you can put the top three of their library into the graveyard. Uh, not a bad deal. Pretty cool. Three casting costs. Really nice card. Okay. So that's it, guys. That's the uh, new core set. That's the toolkit. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed watching. Sorry, this was probably a bit longer than I would have normally intended. But like I said, just getting back into it. So I kind of want to go through this stuff myself. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'm out of here. Peace.